All right, good morning, everybody. Okay, we are going to do um, the second part of the electricity lecture. This is going to be talking about current um, Ohm's law, power, um, and the constant flow of electricity. All right, so first thing to know is um, uh, before 1794, the only real electricity you knew about were, um, you would know about static electricity. So it would be just the, you know, obviously lightning, um, or like I said in the previous lecture they had, it was kind of like a party trick where you'd have things spinning and you could get the shock and sh show a spark before that. But, um, 1794 was when a scientist, an Italian scientist named Alessandro Giuseppe Antonio Anastasio Volta, and we will just call him Volta. He created the first battery, which allowed a constant flow of electricity. All right, so this is what his battery looked like. His battery was an acid bath with two pieces of metal. You had copper and you had zinc. All right, and the deal was this. If you place copper in acid, it would start to lose electrons as it went through a chemical reaction. Okay, so think about it. If you're losing electrons, what kind of charge would that copper get? be positive all right then zinc if you place zinc in an acid bath it would start gaining electrons through the chemical reaction so you have that gaining electrons if you're gaining electrons and now you have more electrons than protons what would you get a negative charge so now what you have are two pieces of metal that will have constantly different charges. One will have a constant positive charge, one will have a different constant negative charge. All right, so let's say you place a wire between from one piece of the metal to the other piece of the metal. Well, where there's too many electrons, they want to repel and move away to where there's too few. So if you picture the leads of like a battery or the leads of, of Volta's battery, what you had were a spot where there are too, too many electrons wanting to push all the electrons to where there's too few. So electrons are going to be flowing from negative to positive. Now, this is, so I want you to understand that just about how it works. But after hundreds of years of convention, after hundreds of years of us working with electricity, we always will talk about the current. Okay, and the current is actually the opposite. When we talk about electric current, we will always say, say that electric current flows from positive to negative. Okay, so I want you to understand how it works, but then when we start actually trying to picture current and how current flows, I want you to think the opposite because current will always go from where there's a positive to where there's a negative. Okay, all right, now you could also do this um, and there's a cool Mark Rover video on this where he created um, a, a battery to try to power a car by solely, he had a ton of metal. We had, he had basically copper and zinc, all right? And other metals would work too, but he had, you would just essentially have these two pieces of metal placed inside of an acid bath, which was like a lemon, okay? And you might've seen um, like, uh, science stores sometimes sell it where it's, it's uh, you have two different uh, nails that you place in say a potato and then you can power a clock. All right, so all of these things are doing the same thing. And they, they've said that, you know, some people will be able to run some kind of computer through the same idea. So you're just creating this constant flow in any kind of acid bath. You could even do it with salt water. Take a piece of felt, dip it in salt water, take a penny and take a dime and you would actually create a little bit of a voltage. All right, so there you go. Um, next, with this, you need to know that um, when we talk about the difference in charge, okay, between the positive and negative, the difference in charge, we call that the potential difference. We also call that voltage, so named after Volta. So you'll hear the words potential difference um, maybe electric potential difference, or you'll hear the word voltage. They all mean the same thing. It all means the difference in charge and how much current will be all the flow. Um, this current is direct current because it's a steady stream. Anything on a battery 
that goes steady current flow from positive to negative is direct current or DC. Now in your house, we have AC, right? So if you look at an outlet, that's not a direct current flow. That's going to be AC, meaning it's going to be, if you think about the two, two prongs that plug in, for, one, for a short second it'll, or short m amount of time, it'll be positive one side, negative on the other, and then it flips back and forth. So it's flipping back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, giving you a current flow that looks like a sine wave. Okay, that's alternating current or AC. So there's two ways that we have current, uh, uh, electricity, DC and AC. Okay, DC with batteries, AC is when you plug into the wall. Later on, I'll talk about it, but the whole battle, if you know about Thomas Edison and him creating a light bulb, he was a big, big believer in DC. And he, when he created the first electric companies, they were in DC. Um, but now you get, we all get AC and he battled other scientists. He battled Tesla. Okay. The car company is named after him, Tesla. And, um, and a guy that, that paid for everything. Um, and they, cause they wanted AC for electric power. And we'll talk about that later. Okay. Here is the equation. Power is equal to current times voltage. P equals IV. So we're going to say P is, the, is for power, and you already know that from work and energy. So power, which is going to be measured in watts, again, just like you see watts on your light bulb, power is equal to current, which is going to be the letter I, and it's going to be measured in amps or amperes. Okay? Current times voltage, voltage will be the letter V and it's measured in volts. Okay, so P equals IV is the equation. Now, an electrician uses this every single day. So an electrician, what they're gonna do is they're going to um, look at a circuit. So let's say you hired an electrician to come to your house and you say, well, I wanna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna redo my basement and I want a stereo, I want a uh, microwave, I want a refrigerator, I need all these things, I need all these lights. Well, what the electrician's going to have to do is they're going to look at the, all the power that you need to consume. So, you know, the microwave, you look at the back of a microwave, it would have watts. A stereo would tell you watts. Um, a, uh, a fridge would tell you watts. All these things would have amount, a total amount of power that they use. You add up all that power, and that's a total power that needs to, that's going to be used on a circuit for an electrician. So he knows a P. Okay, then in the United States of America, you get 120 volts AC always. Okay, so every time you plug in a wall, you know in the United States of America, you get 120 volts. That's just set out there. So you have 120 volts. If you know the total power, P, and divided by V, 120 volts, you know how much current is going to run through the circuit. And that current is going to be then told him, all right, well, you need to have a 15 amp circuit. So he's going to have to have a, a specific wire and he's going to have a specific um, circuit breaker in the house. So what you should all do is go to your house, go to, go to the circuit breaker in your house and go look and you'll see numbers. You'll see 15, 20, 12, whatever. You'll see different uh, current ratings for your circuit breaker. Okay. And all that was calculated by your electrician when he, when he ran wires in your house. Okay. All right. So again, the units, watts, amps, volts. Um, one more thing about this slide is that if you look at any kind of, um, plug in for like a charger, now cell phone chargers have kind of changed now. So I need to change the slide. But, um, if you look at a charger on a laptop, it will tell you a set amount of, um, current that it takes and a set amount of voltage it takes when you have those little plugs that plug into the chargers. So you always want to pay close attention to that. And, and at home, go look around at, at your laptop charger or some other chargers and see if you can see where it says the current and the voltage um, going into the plug, okay? Um, you'll see an input and output. Next, okay, so now a um, couple of things to remind you. So again, the United States of America, you get 120 volts AC. This is going to get annoying. This is the way I'm always going to remind you that you always use 120 volts. If you're talking about, if I give you any problems where you're plugged into a wall, you know to use 120 volts as the voltage. 
but that's not always the case. So some, we're going to talk about other batteries. We're going to talk about other uh, power supplies and those voltages could be different. Okay. But if there's sometimes if you're given a problem and you don't know what the voltage is, check and see that if it's something that we're plugging into your house, then it's 120 that you're going to use. All right. Um, and understand Europe is actually different, which is why if you ever travel outside the U S Europe or, or other countries, you actually have to get a power adapter that's going to change the voltage from 120 to whatever they're using. All right. And one last thing is that if you look at your dryer, your dryer is actually a different voltage. So your dryer is actually going to be doubled up the amount of voltage. Okay. So basically 240, but I, I think they always say 220. Um, all right. So there you go. Um, practice the P equals IV. Now, now let's talk about how current flows. Current will always flow like we talked about from positive to negative. All right. One way you could think about it is like it's a um, pump house. Let's say you had, let's say you had a beautiful pool with a waterfall outside. Okay. If you did that, you would need to have something that would build up the pressure to push the water up to the top of the waterfall and then drop down. And as it dropped down, it would lose pressure. All right. So that's the whole idea of electricity. You're going to build up pressure on one end. It's going to push the electricity. Okay. Or water up to one end. And then the electricity will drop when it goes through something like a resistor, a light bulb, pretty much everything you plug in, in this class, we'll just treat it as basic resistors. Okay. So you plug in a light bulb, that's just a resistor and it's going to drop the voltage when it goes across there. Okay. Um, and so the, there's a whole analogy. And honestly, the one thing I just want you to remember is when we talk about current, it's a lot easier. You don't picture electric current, but you can picture water current. So I'm going to talk, you know, sometimes if you're drawing a circuit and you're looking at how the current flows, it's easy to think of it as a river that's flowing. And then if it splits up, if you have a wire that splits up into two smaller pieces, you can picture that as um, a little, two little creeks that split off of a big river and then met back together again. All right, um, moving on. All right, so next slide to look at are circuit parts. The voltage supply, if, when you look at that, two things to look at for it. You have a longer side and a shorter side. You also have a plus and a minus. That will always show you the longer side will always be the positive side plus plus you also see the plus sign. Okay. Um, some people will say that's not really a power supply. It, you know, that's just a cell. I need you to have a bunch of long, short, long, short, and they're right, but I don't care. I'm going to be lazy. And most of the time, if I'm drawing something, I just want to do a long side, short side and draw it along. If you really want to, if you want to make somebody else happy, do a bunch of long shorts, uh, and then do the plus and minus still the plus side has to be the longer side. Um, but, uh, in my class, just one long side, one side, long side, one short side is all you need to show a power supply like a battery. All right. Resistors will be the zigzag lines. Okay. Um, and then you do want to draw an arrow to show which direction the current is going in. So once you know which direction it is, once you've drawn the circuit, you know that the arrow is always going to go from positive to negative, you want to do an arrow just to kind of show where the currents are going. All right. All right. The next slide is Ohm's law. Ohm's law is the equation V equals I times R. Okay. Again, V is voltage. It's with the units volts. I is current. And again, with the units amps and R is resistance. And we're going to use the, uh, the units for that are going to be ohms, which you can rewrite as OHM, or you can do the little, uh, Omega symbol, capital, uh, Omega symbol, which is Greek from the Greek alphabet. Um, and that will do just fine as well. Okay. So however you want to pra practice drawing that little Omega instead of writing OHM, it's good practice, but either one will be good for units. All right. Um, again, understand that Ohm's law is going to be, or, uh, Understand that the, that current is going to always go from positive to negative. Always, always, always. Okay. Uh, I have a slide. I don't know if it's going to show up again, but if in there, if you want to practice, if I have an eight volt battery and I have a four ohm resistor, 
go ahead and calculate how much current is going to run through that circuit. If I have a basic simple circuit, just one, one battery, one resistor, okay, 8 volt battery, 4 ohm resistor, all you're going to do is the voltage, since we have the current, or um, since we have Ohm's law, V equals IR, we're going to take the voltage V, divide it by the resistance R, and we'll get the current I to be 2. Okay. Now, a little side note. <clears throat> Why is electricity dangerous? It's not really the voltage that's dangerous. It's the current. So current running through your body causes all kinds of problems. Okay, so when you have current running through or too much current running through your body, that's when it gets dangerous. But it's actually a tiny, tiny bit of current. So only 0 0.07 amps could possibly kill you. But it's not like it's going to be scary. If somebody had a sign that said, warning, watch out, possibly 0 0.07 amps, you wouldn't be scared about it, right? So you see the signs that say, warning, 10,000 volts. The 10,000 volts could actually be okay if you're fully insulated, okay, and your voltage is so high that there's not much current running through you. But let's say if I, if I touch an outlet right now, which I'm not going to do, it would really hurt. I would get shocked, okay? It would hurt me. There would be a certain amount of current running through me and it would hurt. But it would be for a short second and there would not be that high of a current if I'm standing, you know, dressed the way I am and I have shoes on and I touch it. But what if I'm touching something, like uh, touching an outlet, but I'm standing in water, okay? Now my, my resistance has dropped down, which means the current's gonna go up and now I could get hurt, okay? Um, so understand that, that now we have a lot of safeguards out there. If you look at any of the outlets in your bathroom or in your kitchen, or you know in school we have them, they're run on GFIs, ground fault indicators. And the idea is that they're basically little mini circuit breakers. So if you were to touch an outlet in your house and, they saw, and, and the uh, GFI saw a spike in current, it would immediately pop so that you're safe. And the reason they're doing that, the reason you have them in kitchens and bathrooms is because you're near water. Same with outside. Any outside um, uh, outlets that are connected to your house will have a GFI connected to it for the same reason, okay, to try to keep you safe. Okay, first let's talk about series circuits. Now you remember this probably from fifth grade or some grade, I don't know, in elementary school, that if a series circuit, if one light bulb, if let's say you had a bunch of Christmas lights and they were all wired in series, if one light bulb burned out, they would all go out because current could not flow. If you can picture two resistors in series, if all of a sudden one of those resistors burns out like a light bulb, the current cannot complete its circuit and current cannot go from positive to negative anymore, so there won't be any light bulbs on, there won't be any current running through there, okay? So that's what you learned from before. What you also need to know is um, the voltage in a series circuit will always differ. They could be the same numbers, but they will always add up to the total voltage in the light bulb or in the battery. So if you think about, let's say I have a battery that's 12 volts and I have two resistors that are wired up in series. If one of the resistors has a voltage drop across it that would be let's say four volts then the other one has to have a voltage drop of eight volts so that four plus eight still adds up to the original 12 volts from the battery okay so in a series circuit the voltages add up to the total another thing you want to know is that when we talk about total resistance sometimes i'll say total resistance but i also mean equivalent resistance if you took a circuit with a bunch of things on it let's say you had however many resistors you had 100 resistors in in series, you want to know what the equivalent resistance of that circuit is. Meaning, if I redrew that as just one simple circuit with one voltage or one battery and one resistor, what would that resistor be equivalent to? We say equivalent resistance, we say total resistance, and that would mean just in series circuits, just add them up. So all you do is take any resistors in series, add them up, and that would, be the that would be the equivalent resistance if you just had one, okay? So, what you wanna remember is that in a series circuit, the voltages add up to the total, 
or I guess I will read it the way the slide says. In series circuit, the current's gonna stay the same throughout and the voltages add up to the total. So if you go back and look at the slide, if you have, let's, let's say we figured out that there was gonna be one amp of current running through the simple cir or the series circuit, okay? That means there'll be one amp running through the battery, there'll be one amp running through the first resistor, one amp running through the second resistor, okay? So the current stays the same throughout and the voltages add up to the total like we talked about before. Eight plus four would have to, have to add up to the 12 volts of the battery. Okay, now a parallel circuit is the opposite. You can change the words, voltages and currents, just swap them in, in the same spots. So in a parallel circuit, the voltages stay the same throughout and the currents add up to a total. Okay, so if you look at a parallel circuit, now when you have current, let's say we have current running through the battery, think of that as a big river. If that current then gets split up into two smaller little creeks, okay, the current, the number is gonna get split up also. So let's say I have one amp leaving the battery of a parallel circuit, okay? Once they split up into two separate um, little creeks or branches, let's say I have four amps going through one of those branches, it ha or I'm sorry, 0.4 amps going through one of the branches, it's gonna have to be 0.6 going through the other branch because 0.4 plus 0.6 will have to add back up to one. Okay, so if you, if you tried to trace the current um, of a circuit, you could see that it was, all right, one amp that's gonna leave the battery, it hits the brake where it gets split. So you have the one amp going through the battery, it gets split, 0.4 goes through here, 0.6 goes through the other one. When they meet back up again at the bottom and meet back up to go back through the battery, they have to add back up to one. Okay, so like I said, in a parallel circuit, the voltages stay the same throughout and the currents are gonna add back up to the total. All right, so the other part, let's talk about voltages. Let's say now I have a 12 volt battery, again, but now on a parallel circuit. The voltage across each resistor that's parallel to that has to be the same, has to be 12. So if I have 12 volts, a uh, 12 volt battery here, and I have two resistors that are in parallel, there has to be 12 volts across this one, there has to be 12 volts across that one, okay? And then the equation to figure out the total or equivalent resistance is gonna be one over R total is equal to one over R1 plus one over, over R2, okay? So the equation, and that doesn't, that's not the same, you can't simplify that to R total equals R1 plus R2, okay? They're different. Um, and we'll practice doing the math for that later, all right? Okay. Um, the last thing, so we're gonna to have to take a lot of practice in doing this stuff. Um, it's gonna take a lot of practice to understand how the current gets split up in parallel, how the voltage stays the same throughout, and then in series, how the current stays the same throughout in series, and the voltages add up to a total. We'll go through all that stuff, but right now I just wanted to give you the information, and then when we do the practice with the labs, you'll be able to kind of see more in detail how that works and, and have some samples for that. Um, one last thing I want to talk about though. If you think about your circuit breaker, let's say you're at home and uh, you're getting ready to go out. If you could, if you're running in isolation and you're going to be plugging in, let's say um, you decided, oh, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to plug in my stereo in my bathroom. So you plug in your stereo, turn that on. Then uh, you plug in, I don't know, a microwave because you want to heat something up because you're hungry while you're getting ready. You want to plug in a toaster oven, whatever. Okay, let's say you plug in all these things into the circuit and you got your hair dryer going because you want to look good, all right? All these, all these things that you're plugging in, let's pretend they're all just resistors. If you plug all those res resistors into one circuit, okay, then all those are in parallel. Every time you add more and more resistance in parallel, you actually drop down the total or equivalent resistance. So all these things you're plugging in is actually making the total resistance lower and lower and lower. All right, and if you bring the total resistance low, think about Ohm's law, V equals IR, if you have a really low resistance and the voltage is still 120 volts AC, then the current is gonna go up, okay? So the more and more things you plug into one outlet, the higher the high, and higher the current's gonna go, and that's why you keep popping that circuit, okay? 
So understand that when you're plugging things in. Everything in your house is running in parallel. That's why you don't have to have every outlet plugged in, okay? It's also because if you plug into your outlet, you wanna make sure that you know you get 120 volts. So everything in your house is wired in parallel, all right? And if you start plugging stuff in, if you use a circuit breaker or if you plug a lot of stuff in all the outlets in one room and they're all the same circuit, all those things in parallel are going to bring the total resistance down. Okay, that brings the total resistance down, which means the current goes up and you have a higher and higher current going through that, that part of the house. And the circuit breaker is going to pop because all, all of a sudden you have 18 amps going through the circuit that's rated for 15 amps. It's going to pop. All right, and so that's what happens when you overload a circuit. All right, so from here, we'll have worksheets with practice on it. We have a lab that we can do with practice on it. Um, and you want us to go step by step to understand how to do a series circuit and adding up voltages and adding up resistances. Okay. And you want to know how to do a parallel circuit where the voltages in parallel are going to be the same and you're going to get the currents get split up and all that. So we'll work on that with other assignments. All right. Good luck.